Hello everybody and welcome to the next Flight Sim Guides A320 Systems Guide. Today we're going to be having a look at the electrical system which I'm afraid is always the most complex system on an aeroplane but hopefully we'll be able to go through it in a fairly straightforward and comprehensible way. The A320 has a standard 3 phase 115 to 200 volt AC electrical system and a 28 volt DC system. Electrical power is supplied to the aircraft in AC form in normal circumstances and is generated either by the APU generator, the master switch for which is located here on the electrical panel, the engine's own independent drive generators which come online automatically when the engines are running and the master switches for these are located here for generator 1 and here for generator 2 on the overhead panel. AC power can also be supplied via an external power source which is plugged into a receptacle on the forward edge of the fuselage. It goes through a self-test phase and then when it is ready to supply AC electrical power to the AC buzz bars we get a green avail light in the external power push button here on the overhead panel and we know then that the system is ready and we can connect using the push button the external power to the AC buzz bars. When we do so we get a blue on light in the external power push button. If all AC power is lost in flight emergency power can be generated using the emergency generator from the RAT or Ram Air turbine which we looked at in the hydraulics video. It's a turbine the underneath of the fuselage extending automatically into the airflow and this will provide AC electrics for the AC essential bus and then via the essential transformer rectifier unit to the DC essential bus. As an absolute last resort the two batteries that we have on board can supply DC electrical power to the DC essential bus and AC power from this is then provided to the AC essential bus via the use of a static inverter which is not currently displayed on the ECAM screen and the power in this configuration as far as I'm aware will last somewhere in the region of 30 to 40 minutes. As I say this would be a very very uh, rare circumstance that we would see uh, the batteries powering the electrical system only in, in flight and this would only happen if we had complete loss of AC electrical power and the emergency generator uh, for some reason wasn't working or extending either. In normal circumstances generator 1 feeds AC bus 1 the bus bars of course are the sort of junctions that from which all of the various appliances on the aircraft are fed and generator 2 supplies power to AC bus 2. When the APU generator is online it supplies AC electrical power to both bus bars simultaneously and the same for the external power as well. In the event of a generator failure and you can see in this circumstance generator 1 has failed uh, well it hasn't actually failed but I've turned it off for demonstration purposes you can see that the number 2 generator has automatically taken on the burden of powering both AC buzz bars simultaneously and in the box on the elect page of the ECAM you can see the percentage which represents the percentage demand on a particular generator you can see the demand at the moment is fluctuating between around 72 and 73 percent and that is with both AC buzz bars powered from one generator so this tells you a uh, little uh, ECAM caution there telling me the generator one is turned off so this tells you that even though the generator is supplying demand to the entire system essentially there is still only a percentage demand of 73 percent showing you that one generator can very easily take on the, the demand of the entire system. 
Also in the box we have the voltage for the electrical uh, power being supplied and the frequency being supplied as well. The essential AC bus, as the name suggests, powers the aircraft's essential AC items and is powered via AC bus 1. If AC bus 1 fails, then you can see that the essential bus will automatically be powered by AC bus 2 in the event of a malfunction. If it is required to power the AC essential bus by AC bus 2 when AC bus 1 is functioning normally, quite why that would be I'm not quite sure, but uh, if it were required then the AC essential feed push button could be used on the overhead panel and as you can see although AC bus 1 is working normally AC bus 2 is now providing power to the essential AC bus. The transformer rectifiers TRs transform the AC electrical power from the AC bus bars into 28 volt DC power for the DC bus bars. In normal circumstances transformer rectifier 1 is fed by AC 1 and transformer rectifier 2 is fed by AC bus 2. If one of the AC buses were to fail however the remaining energized DC bus would power the failed side and its DC bus bar as well as the DC battery bus. This would happen automatically after approximately five seconds following the loss of the AC bus bar in question. The aircraft has two batteries which are permanently connected to two, two hot buses and the DC battery bus will charge the batteries batteries automatically connect to the DC battery bus to charge and will then automatically be disconnected by a charge limiter when they reach their optimum charge. The remainder of the controls on the electrical panel are relatively straightforward. We've had a look at the master switches for the engine generators, the APU generator and the external power source. You'll notice that there is a bus tie switch as I've already shown you, when one generator fails, the other generator will supply electrical power to both AC bus bars automatically, and this is done via the use of a bus tie. This is automatically controlled so that if a generator fails and the APU generator isn't online, the other generator will automatically power the remaining bus bar. If, however, the bus tie is selected off, and I've also deselected the APU generator you'll notice that when I deselect generator 2 the entire side of the electrical system powered by generator 2 then remains isolated and unpowered if I turn the bus tie back to auto you'll notice that generator 1 then connects to the second AC bus bar and normal electrical power will then resume. You may have noticed as well that when we lost the second generator and therefore AC bus 2 became de-energized we also lost the lower ECAM screen and so I had to use the switching control here on the pedestal in order to bring up the ECAM screen to the captain's side where the navigation display would normally be presented. Now that generator 1 is feeding both AC bus bars I can flick that back to normal. Next to the generator switches we also have the independent drive generator switches. You'll notice these are guarded because unlike the generator master switches which can be turned off and on at will and I've been doing so for demonstration purposes the 
independent drive generator switch actually physically disconnects the drive from the circuit. This then can't be reconnected in flight and it has to be done on the ground by an engineer. Which is why the switch is guarded so as to avoid inadvertent deselection in flight. The AC essential feed push button we've already looked at and here are the master switches for the batteries themselves. If you're starting from cold and dark these will be turned off and you'll have to select these on in turn either before connecting external power or uh, starting the APU and that's really what the batteries are used for in no normal circumstances we don't tend to use them in flight but we would use them on the ground to start the APU if the external power is not available. The push buttons on the top left of the panel are to do with shedding loads from the electrical system so as to keep the demand nice and low which may be necessary in the event of a generator failure where you've got one generator supplying power for the entire system. The commercial push button isolates electrical power to the commercial electrical appliances. These include the cabin and cargo lights, uh, I think they include the water system in the toilet, um, the power in the galley, uh, things like the in-flight entertainment systems, um, also the ice protection for the drain masts and switching this push button off will simply isolate the electrical power to those particular systems and help reduce the demand a little bit should it be necessary to do so. And the galley and cabin push button again usually left in the automatic position but can be used to isolate the power to the main galley, the secondary galley power supply and also the in-flight entertainment system as well. We also have an emergency electrical power panel here on the left hand side this is really to do with the RAT, the ram air turbine, which we looked at in the hydraulics segment of the uh, of the system's guides. And as we said in that video, the RAT will automatically deploy when certain conditions are met. So in regard to the electrical system, the ram air turbine will deploy when AC bus 1 and AC bus 2 simultaneously are not supplied electrically and the aircraft's airspeed is greater than 100 knots. This will mean then that the blue hydraulic system will drive the emergency generator, the RAT extends into the airflow and it will provide AC power to the essential AC bus which then in turn via the AC transformer, essential transformer rectifier will supply power to the DC essential bus. However, the man on push button, which as you can see is guarded because as we've, as we've discussed you can't manually retract the rat in flight. Once you've extended it you can't put it back. This has to be done on the ground by an engineer. So to make sure that the system isn't inadvertently selected in flight there's a nice guard here to ensure that we don't, uh, we don't suffer from any finger trouble. And the indication here next to it is the fault light which will uh, come on in red if the emergency generator is not supplying power and AC bus 1 and 2 are simultaneously unpowered. And the emergency generation test again it's guarded but can be used if the AC normal buses are energized then the emergency generator it will test the emergency generator system and the AC essential and DC essential buses will be connected to the emergency generator and if it's only the batteries that are energized then the static inverter um, will power the AC essential bus thereby testing the integrity of that particular system as well. This test function would not be used in ordinary circumstances it's really a, an engineering function. The only final indication that I think we've missed out is the temperature of the IDG or independent drive generator and it's important to monitor this it will become and the only other indication that we've missed out is the temperature of the IDGs which is uh, found here on the lower edge of the lower ECAM screen and these will become amber if the oil outlet temperature for a particular IDG 
increases beyond 185 degrees or if the oil pressure gets too low or if the IDG uh, becomes disconnected. Between 147 and 185 degrees you'll notice that the legend will actually flash. And that's really it for the electrical system. Hope you've enjoyed the program, it's been of some use to you and please make sure that uh, you post any questions on the uh, page itself if you have any queries and uh, I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching folks.